Hello children. So once again today we are going to take up one very important correlative conjunctions that is no sooner and no sooner is always followed by than and hardly and scarcely is always followed by when. So we are going to study and see today these two correlative conjunctions which are very important and it is frequently asked in the examination, right? And here we also understand one thing, the concept of inversion, right? Because whenever no sooner is used, so no sooner is always followed by then and hardly and scarcely is followed by when and they are, they are used, they are written following the concept of inversion. So today what we are going to do, we are going to do number one, no sooner. So first of all you need to understand with no sooner, what is used, with no sooner we use, then and number two is hardly, hardly and scarcely and with hardly and scarcely we use when and with these two we use the inversion, inversion. Now understand what is this concept of inversion, right? Generally see in assertive sentence, right? or declarative sentence, what is the order of the word in a sentence? In a positive sentence or in a negative sentence, the order of words in a sentence are first there comes subject and then follows verb, right? And when the sentence is interrogative, so yes an interrogative sentence, first we start with verb and then we take subject. But inversion pattern says that, you know inversion pattern says that even if a sentence is assertive or positive sentence, even the inversion pattern allows us to bring verb before subject. And this idea is included in no sooner followed by them. Now what it is when I am going to use it with an example you will understand. So first let me tell you the meaning of no sooner than and for what two type of different sentences this concept is allowed. Right? And this concept, this conjunction, correlative conjunction is used. So this correlative conjunction is used no sooner, you know, than when there are two actions happened in the past tense, past time, and those two actions were followed one after another. Right? Immediately one after another without, without much of time gap. <coughs> Sorry. Without much of time gap, when the two actions are followed immediately after one after another, so to combine those two sentences, we use the concept of no sooner than and the same thing we also use hardly or scarcely when. So the we, we can use these correlative conjunctions to combine those two sentences which happen right back to back immediately, right? And there was not much of time gap between two actions and one more thing is you know coming to use when we uh, when we are going to use no sooner with no sooner we use then and with the hardness task we use when it is that we have to use the concept of inversion let us try so first we are going to see you know or no sooner than is that clear so let us see no sooner than she arrives she starts, she begins, do it like this, she begins to study. See here. She arrives, she begins to study. You know, there is hardly a gap between these two actions. Means she arrives and the next moment she sits and starts studying. So there is hardly any time gap between these two actions. So they, they, they happen back to back. So for such sentences, we are going to use no sooner and with no sooner we use then. Right? So this sentence we have to start with no sooner. And I told you, when you start a sentence with no sooner, after that you have to use verb. Right? So here the first sentence is, she arrives. So from arrives, we can take out the verb does. 
right to make it because it is in simple present so we have taken out the verb from arise we have taken taken out the word arise uh, means we have from arise we have taken out does and now it will become she arise because you know with does do and did we write first from a verb once again try to understand it's very easy try to understand what i have done here i have written two sentences first sentence is she arise and second sentence is she begins to study is that clear so here we see you know what here we see from arise it's in simple present so the verb since i have started the sentence with no no sooner so no sooner will always take the pattern of inversion and inversion that means subject verb you need to place before subject so from arise it if i have taken does now i am going to write she and since it, i have already used the word does here so it is going to be arise fine and i have told you that with no sooner we use than so next word you are going to write than and here she begins she begins to study and here it begins to remain because you know this does has nothing to do with that begins this does has influence only with arrive so since here it is does so it is arrive but this will remain begins is that clear what you can see how i have combined these two sentences here it is she arrives she begins to study so we need to start the sentence no sooner no sooner and it is arrives so that's why i use here does no sooner does she arrive than she begins to study see a call is coming so that she begins now let us see this one with another example fine let us see another example the bell the bell rang the children came out of the class so here there are again two sentences again calls again there are two sentences here the bell rang and here the children came out of the class right so here again you see in these two sentences you know again the, the both the actions you know go means go, take place immediately after the first action is over immediately after the first action you know second action starts and that's why and here it is a simple past see the tense can could be really here it was the combination of both the sentences i have kept in simple present here it was arise here it was begins here are both in simple past rang and came out so that means you know immediately the bell rang and the student came out of the class so there was hardly a time gap the bell went right and the student came out so again we need to go and do the no sooner so how we can start we can start with no sooner no sooner and this is simple past so here the verb we can use is did right and after that since i have used did it is rang in the second form so now it will become the bell rang no sooner did the bell ring no sooner did the bell ring and that director than the children rest part all came out of the class see here once again i have to have a look at the sentence so since you know the bell rang and the students came out of the class both the both the actions happened immediately after one another so that's why and here this rang is in simple past so we can use here did no sooner did the bell ring right because here did so that's why it's going to be ring because with do does did we always write first form verb and then it is rang and the next part we are going to write as it is so here it will remain came it will not become come because this did has influence only over ring right this did has no influence over this verb came now let us take one more sentence with no sooner no sooner also. now how can you do this she had reached the station the train departed right so immediately first it reached the station and then the train 
departed. Again, we can start with no sooner. And here, it's very easy, you know, here the verb is already there had. So we don't need to think that what verb we are going to use it after it. So here it is had, no sooner had, after that, she. And here, you will write reached only because the sentence is in past perfect. So with had, we always use third form of verb. Here we will not write which, keep this in your mind. Reach the station. And after that, we write always then. The next sentence will be the same. The train arrived. Sorry, departed. Is that clear, children? So, what did we see just now here? We saw the use of no sooner. And no sooner is always used with then. So, what is the idea when we are supposed to use no sooner? We are supposed to use no sooner when we are going to combine two sentences where the time gap between both the sentences is almost nothing. One action happens immediately after the next action follows the next action. And no sooner is always followed by then. And with no sooner, we always write sentence in the inversion pattern. What is that inversion pattern? That inversion pattern is when we are going to use, you know, verb before the subject. Now we are going to see hardly the scarcely, right? The idea here is also the same. Even we use hardly the scarcely for combining those two sentences, you know, which happen, which take place immediately after the first action and there is hardly a time gap. But here the idea is, you know, with hardly and scarcely we use when. So let us see one more example. She, she reached the station, the train arrived. Right? And with hardly and scarcely, you know, then we write the past perfect. You can also write this way, no problem. Hardly or scarcely did. Because you need to write work. So did you have any this reached? This is a simple part. So from there I have taken did. After that we will write she. And since I have written did here, so from which it will become reach station. And with hardly scarcely we use when. And rest part of the sentence is going to be the same. When the train arrived. Fine. So what was the idea? Again the idea is the same. With the hardly and scarcely we always use when. And this conjunction, correlative conjunction is used to combine those two actions which happen immediately after the first action. There is hardly a time gap. And again this sentence also, you know, it, it takes the use of what called inversion pattern. Next you see. She had reached home. It started raining. So again, we are going to write the sentence with hardly, scarcely, hardly, scarcely. And then here there is no problem with the verb because had is there, we had it here. Then subject. And it will remain rich only because it is in past topic, so we had we always write that form rich home. When and when means next sentence is going to be like you are going to write as it is. It started raining. It started raining. Is that clear, children? So, what have we seen today? So, here we have seen the use of Scarce is hardly, scarcely hardly is followed by when. So once again I tell you children, you know both the both these correlative conjugations. No sooner is followed with than, hardly scarcely is followed with when. Both these conjugations are used to combine those two actions which take place immediately after the first action is over. There is hardly a time gap. And both these correlative conjugations are used, you know, in with the concept of inversion. What is the meaning of inversion? Inversion says that first we need to use verb before subject in affirmative sentence. Is that clear? Okay. Thank you and God bless you.